Good morning. Welcome to Microsoft Build. My name is John Knoll, and I'm the Chief Creative Officer at Industrial Light and Magic. The Apollo moon landing was the cutting edge of 1960s technology. And today, with the help of my friend and author of A Man on the Moon, Andy Chaikin. Hi, everybody. Um, we're going to recreate the mission with some 21st century technology using the power of Unreal Engine and HoloLens 2. Andy? Well, you know, Apollo 11 landed on the moon July 20th, 1969, 50 years ago. I was seven years old. I was 13, and I'd been waiting for it for a long time. And what made it possible was this. The Saturn V moon rocket. The most powerful rocket ever successfully flown. 363 feet to long. And each of its three stages had its own job to do, firing for a few minutes and then falling away. And it was all to take this Apollo spacecraft and three astronauts all the way to the moon. You know, one of those really iconic memories, uh, images from the Apollo program was the, the image of this interstage ring falling back away from the second stage. You know, I've actually wondered what that ring was for. So the story is that when the second stage was ready to ignite, it was weightless, and so was the fuel inside the tanks. Uh, the drains for the fuel are down at the bottom, so they needed some method to force the fuel to slosh down to the bottom. So the, this interstage ring has got these four solid rocket ullage motors, and they fire to provide a little bit of thrust to make that, uh, that slosh happen so the engines can ignite cleanly. Oh, okay, and then once the engines do ignite, the fuel stays at the bottom. Exactly, so having done its job, they drop the ring away to save weight. Amazing, Apollo engineering. Well, let's take a look at the entire Apollo 11 vehicle on the launch pad at pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And now we're going to see Apollo 11 lift off and send Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins on their way to the moon. So you can see as the stages expend their fuel, they're dropped off again to save that weight. There's the interstage going. Off goes stage two. And the only portions that leave Earth orbit are the third stage in the Apollo spacecraft. And when they do leave Earth orbit, they're traveling at 25,000 miles an hour, which is still the fastest that humans have ever gone. So on the, along the translunar coast, the command module separates. And now Mike Collins is driving, and he is going to use the small maneuvering thrusters to do a kind of a pirouette. And there is a docking mechanism that's in the nose of the command module and he slowly approaches the lunar module until the docking mechanism engages the top part of the LEM. And he pulls the LEM free from the now spent uh, third stage, and there's your Apollo spacecraft. And the last thing that has to happen before they continue is that they turn the spacecraft so that the sun is shining on the side, and they initiate a very slow rotation. They actually called it the barbecue mode <laughs> to even out the sun's intense heat to avoid baking just one side. Now the lunar module, the part that's actually going to land on the moon, is the ultimate in form driven by function engineering. You know, for me, that's what really makes it beautiful. It had to be as lightweight as they could possibly make it. So for example, in the crew cabin, in the ascent stage, the walls are only about as thick as a few sheets of aluminum foil. Just no concessions at all to aerodynamics or anything. Yeah, because it only flew in the vacuum of space, so it didn't need to be aerodynamic. It's like a giant metallic insect. <laughs> all right, so they arrive successfully at the moon. Neil and Buzz transfer into the lunar module, and they begin what amounts to a controlled fall down to the surface. And there are some tense moments as they make their way down to the moon. I mean, there's computer alarms that threaten to abort the landing, but the experts in mission control tell Armstrong and Aldrin that they can keep going. And once that's, that's happened uh, and Armstrong gets a good view of where it is the guidance computer is taking him, it's right to the rim of this giant football stadium-sized crater that's got uh, boulders all around the rim that are the size of automobiles. And he thinks, I can't land there. 
Right, so Armstrong at this point takes over semi-manual control and he steers the lunar module past the big crater and flies onward, hunting for a safe place to land, but knowing that his fuel supply is diminishing. As he's coming down, the thrust of the engine starts to pick up dust from the surface. And that dust starts to spray out um, radially away from the center and starts confusing uh, Armstrong's perception of, uh, of where he's moving laterally. And that's a big concern because he really wants to come down straight down to avoid breaking off a leg or tipping over. And you can see he's wandering around a bit and when he finally does come down, he's, uh, he's sliding left a bit, and that's because the, the sheet of dust is making him think he's going, going right. Finally, they touch down, and it's so gentle that neither of them feels the actual moment of contact with the moon. Now, seven hours later, they've put on their suits, they depressurize the cabin, they open the hatch, and here comes Neil Armstrong emerging from the lunar module, to climb down that ladder on the front leg of the lander. And so because that landing was so gentle, the struts didn't really compress. You know, they were designed to take that impact of landing. And so they're not compressed, so there's a much bigger step there between the bottom rung and the pad. But in the moon's one-sixth gravity, it's no problem at all. So he's down in the foot pad, and now he's going to be very careful, very methodical. He's describing the appearance of the very powdery surface. And now it's time to take that historic first step onto the surface of the moon. And the immortal quote, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. All right. I'd like to give a big thank you to the team at Epic and Microsoft. Enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.